Good morning fellow Plexers. I've done quite a few different Filebot videos and whenever I learn something new I want to do a new Filebot video. Well I haven't learned anything new but I've decided to make a Windows setup video because I'm a long time Linux user. I've used elementary OS since about 2013, the end of 2013 with version 0.2 and I just assume everything works the same on Windows as it does on Linux, but I'm going to discover that on the fly today. I haven't set anything up beforehand to know whether this will work exactly the same way or not. All I've done is moved some files to my Windows install. I've got a bunch of movies that need to be renamed. And you'll have to forgive me because I'm not used to using Windows and I have a few TV shows to rename first season of each so I thought I'd start by installing both Filebot and Media Info and doing a Windows specific Filebot tutorial video that uses the custom expressions that I've shown in other videos so I'm recording this with Vocal Screen NG the same recording software I use in Linux so let's start with Filebot. Let's download it. And let's download Media Info. Let's see, look at all these options. Let's do the Universal Installer. So Filebot's downloaded. I have no idea what that is. And I have no idea what this is. Oh, this is neat, isn't it? Let's see what I got Filebot now. Alrighty, so I can open up Filebot, I think. Okay, so we'll just leave that off to the side. Good old Microsoft Edge. And now we'll get Media Info installed. Use the recommended settings. And I have no idea why Windows Media Player opens up, but let's just assume that that installed right. Under Linux, the Media Info interface would open up. All right, so we can get rid of both of these. And this is the recording software I installed. And I had also installed um, MKB Tool Nix before I started the video and I grabbed a few subtitles. I'm not sure if I'm going to use the subtitles or not. Maybe I will. Let's let's see. Well, maybe I didn't grab the subtitles yet. Doesn't really matter if they're synced or not. We're just going to use them for the purpose of renaming. So let's grab that one. This opened off screen. I'm used to being able to use tabs in my file manager in Windows or in Linux, and I'm not used to the well, I'm not used to anything with Windows. Alright, so let's just drag these in. And we've got some subtitles to play with with one of the 
one of the TV shows. This this actually has embedded subtitles. I can't open with MKV Tool Nix like I can under Linux or under Elementary OS. Apparently. But I should be able to drag a file in. And you can see how this file already has a subtitle, so the the external subtitles I just added to the folder won't be necessary, but they'll just be for a demonstration purpose. Alright, so let's get FileBot prepped. I have to put my license in. And if I can remember where to do that, I might not be able to do it until I go to rename my first file. So we'll just assume that's the case. So I'm going to put in my advanced expressions and show you how to use FileBot with and without those advanced expressions. So let's start with the expression I'm going to use for my movie um, files. This expression pulls from TMDB and I'm sorry, where am I? I feel like I'm missing something. Yeah, I think I screwed up my own docs file. So I wrote an expression originally for TMDB and then I think I did the same thing for IMDB and I must have deleted the TMDB one. So let's just copy that in. So we'll go down here to the little paper with a gear and edit the preset and choose new preset. And I'm going to call it movie library deluxe. and save the preset. Then I'll do the same thing, edit. Oh, hold on, let's edit this because I'm not sure what I did. Yeah, I missed a step. So by default, the data source is TVDB and I can't have that for my movie library. I have to choose the movie database. So let's, let's fix that mistake, save the preset, and I'm glad I caught that. So edit preset, new preset. We'll call this TV show, library, deluxe, hit OK. So we've got the correct database pointed to, and I want to name the episode based on their aired date and not DVD date. Everything I set up on Plex is for the aired ordering, and I actually changed one setting in my Plex library, TV show library, to make sure that episode ordering points to the TVDB and not the movie database. All right, so this is my expression for TV shows. We'll copy that. And I'll put these expressions in the description of this YouTube video once I post it. So I can save the presets. And let's go back to Go back to, where am I? Again, not being able to have a tabbed file manager. Maybe you can, I just don't know how. Um, it's kind of bugging me in, in Windows. So the reason I have Windows 11 installed is about three months ago, I got rid of my self-built first gen i7 computer that I did like 11, 12 years ago that I've kept updated with different video cards and different um, SATA SSDs to make it faster. And I built a beautiful i9 system on a Asus Creators motherboard with a Asus 3060 video card and just all the bells and whistles. 
Well, unfortunately, my case LED lighting um, doesn't have any software control from within, within Linux, and I've got to use the ASUS software within yeah. Windows. If I do a warm reboot, my lighting profile stays the same, but if I do a cold boot, I have to boot into Windows 11 first to reset the lighting profile, and then I can warm boot back into elementary OS. Weird story, but that's why I'm using Windows again. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to see if this works like it does on my elementary OS desktop. I'm going to see if I can open it in something, show more options. Alright, so I can't right click and open in FileBot like I can with, with um, elementary OS. So I'll just drag it in. So if I simply click rename, I'm sorry, if I simply click match and choose episode mode, the TVDB, FileBot works by default just with a simple file name. Oh, and I'm actually getting this one times 01 under Windows. Interesting. I've been helping someone in a Plex group try to not have this happen. So I'm glad that I know it's happening in Windows. Let's see what might be going on here. Let's try my Express. Okay, my Express, or my, my custom expression worked fine. That is so interesting. Well, Matt's, if you're watching this, use my custom expressions and put media info on your system. Let's see if we have the same issue here. I'm sure we will. All right, so episode mode, the TVDB. Let me just try the movie database this time. Pick the right show. Let's just skip that. It's confused by the specials folder. All right, so just pointing it to the the um, movie database fixed it. I wonder what's going on with a Windows version of FileBot that's not happening with a Linux version of FileBot. Either way, the custom expression grabbed it. So it's getting confused by the special folder, so I'll skip that. And it's it's missing with the specials. Um, so I'd, I'd want to remove those two until I figured out why that wasn't a match. So basically, once you use the custom expression, and again, you don't have to use a full expression. Let's edit this. If you weren't ever concerned with subtitles, you could remove that. If you wanted to leave the subtitle part in and remove the descriptive file characteristics part of it, you would remove the VF, the VC, the AF, and the AC. Um, let's go back over here. And let's just use the movies as, as the example. If you just wanted the, the name of the movie, the year of the movie, and the video format and the video codec and the subtitle, you'd have this. This is how I've added in the audio format and audio codec characteristics. If you didn't want the subtitle, just remove that. Um, and if you just wanted a basic, basic file expression, use this. So let's try that to see if that'll f fix Matt's issue. Oh, sorry, we're, we're grabbing something for, let me just grab the whole thing and I'll fix it in FileBot. All right, so let's go in here, edit preset, new preset, TV show, 
library. Let's do basic as the name. I'll paste in my full expression and I will get rid of the codec information and leave the subtitle switch turned on. So let's save that preset and now let's apply it to this show. Alright, so I'm skipping, but it's still... I'd have to check the TVDB to see if I've got the specials labeled right. I may not. Alright, so this is giving me a more traditional name, and it's it's working correctly unlike the default expression or the default binding is what they call it so let's do this again let's um get rid of everything and test it with a different series this is a reboot a one season reboot of a famous uk show definitely find coupling um that was broadcast in the UK, very funny show from the year 2000. So I'm going to use the default binding for TVDB and pick coupling US because it's not the original from the UK. All right, and now doing that, I'm getting the correct season episode code. So, a little funkiness under Windows, but the custom expressions you have an informational message. seem to work fine, just like I would expect them to. Oh, my, my mistake. Wrong show. All right, so you'll, you'll see the extra info added in. It is going to give the file name, the descriptors for the for the um, characteristics, characteristics of the video. This is a 360p, the encoding XVID, two-channel audio, MP3 audio. And if I simply hit rename, now it wants me to select the license file. I'm going to do that off screen. I'm not sure if the name of the file gives any details away. So now if we hit rename, all right, so what am I doing here? Oh, not sort, it's view. So we've given this the complex name. So let's do our other shows, we'll do it um, we'll work our way downward. All right, so let's ignore the special directory because, again, one of these, why doesn't the file browser remember my choice? Maybe one of these isn't correct uh, according to the database. So let's just drag in season one. And note, I've got it named season 01. You could name it season space one, but the episode um, season coding is always SO1, EO1. So I like to have things match up. And usually that's the exact way that Plex gives it as an example. All right, so let's do the middle choice. The TV show basic expression. Now this is not going to change anything because this is how I had these manually named before I discovered FileBot. So let's let's not do that. Let's use the um, let's use the deluxe on this too. And if we look again, Windows, come on, remember my preference. So we've got these renamed with a nice descriptive file name. And what's left? Seinfeld. 
So we'll, we'll use the basic renaming with this and show you how it doesn't pick up subtitles and then we'll use one of my expressions to show you how it will. So if I go to match, choose the TVDB, Okay, I don't know why the default one is using my custom expression. Could programs just be wacky under Windows? Let's do the movie database as a source. So I don't use the movie database because Occasionally there'll be differences in how some special episodes are in the special folder. And every once in a while there might be a delayed season two for some show. Maybe it comes out three or four years later. And usually the TV database has that listed as just a delayed season. It'll be season two or season three, whatever it needs to be. Sometimes in, this, that, in that case, the movie database will make that a brand new TV show, which is why I point episode ordering to TVDB in my Plex library. And you'll also notice that at the movie database, any TV show has the year in it, and at TVDB it doesn't, it's just the show name. Plex can work with either. I just prefer the TV database as my, my naming Bible if I'm manually trying to match episodes up with a right season episode code because sometimes if you rip your own stuff you've got to watch part of a video part of an episode to see which one it actually is um, and I'm just used to using the TVDB and I make that small change so what I don't understand is how this is working maybe maybe I'll have I have to open it up again because I, I am so used to right-clicking to send files to FileBot and closing it and then just opening again. Maybe keeping it open in Windows remembers what you were doing last. So let's try this again. Alright, so this is where this 1 times 01 is coming up. Let me make sure I've completely eliminated what I think is or isn't going on. See, I'm clicking here, but I can't open it. I have to go over here. All right, this time we'll use the movie database. And we still get that 1x01, so it doesn't matter which way you do it. Let's close it again. drag it in and let's use my basic expression and it has it right. I do have an issue with the expression. See how there's a space between the episode name and the subtitle language. I must have a little space in there that I need to edit out. Save the preset, we'll reapply it. All right, so I just had to edit that space out to not have it added to the file name. So now if I rename, well, you'll see, because of Media Info, it discovered the subtitle file name. So these are just, however they came from subscene.srt. Well, if you live in a bilingual home or something or had relatives that spoke Spanish or French or German or something and you wanted to put subtitles on your media to share with them, you could download the German language or the French language or the Spanish language subtitles and FileBot will name them appropriately um, because of Media Info. So if I hit rename, subtitles are renamed too. And if I drag this back in, 
and I click my advanced TV show library expression. Now we've got that extra media characteristics added in and I can hit rename and boom. We're all set with that more complex file name. Detected. Complex yet compliant. The latest changes to the the movie or the um, TV show library naming guide by Plex, maybe maybe a year ago, maybe eight, nine months ago, made an unannounced change to put this extra file detail info into brackets. I kind of hope they don't do that with a movie naming guide too, but it is what it is and I just adapt when I notice something different. So let's do a group of movies. Now, the one bad habit I started out with when I first started building my collection was I used um, sorting folders in my movie library. Since the latest library updates over a year ago, um, latest movie and scanner and agent, Plex doesn't have an issue. Before the latest update, if you created a new sort folder and put the first movie in it, Plex would be confused. You, you'd have to uh, fix match that movie, but that doesn't happen anymore. And then back, back then, second, third, or fourth, or tenth, or twentieth movie added that sort folder was found by Plex completely with all the default library settings. But again, that doesn't happen anymore. So, let's show you the movies. And I was atrocious at naming my files when I first started out three and a half years ago. As you can see, like you can see this Time Cop 2 uses my latest expression. Um, Look how awful these are. 300 from 2006, Tank Girl from 1995. I don't even have the movie um, listed in parentheses, the, the movie year. So let's just drag all this in. And let's see if I made any mistakes with my movie expression. All right, so it wants to know what this is. So I've even got the year listed wrong. So let's pick the correct movie. And that was the only thing that that Filebot had a problem with. So let's just go through. Looks like it got everything correct. And it's also handling any subtitles it finds. So it auto-determined that Hellboy 2 The Golden Army was an English subtitle and it's adding the, the English flag to it. Now let me show you one more thing. Let's, let's get rid of a bunch of these. And we'll let it just rename the one movie it had a problem with. Let me stop it because now that I know Windows is going to carry over some of the past settings when you use Filebot a second time, I want to open it fresh. So let me just drag in, I don't know, let me just drag in a couple movies. So I'm going to use the, going to use the default bindings. I'll hit match. Slide down to movie mode, the movie database. And without using my complex expressions, it will fix up those goofy file names. And all they really needed was to have the year put in the in parentheses. So now let's drag the whole thing in again. Use my complex expression. This green arrow tells you that the movie is already correctly named to the expression you're using. If there was a red arrow or dot with an arrow, like we saw with the um, specials folder of the one TV show, that would tell you that something is amiss and you shouldn't just hit rename. So I'm going to hit rename and I will hit validate because that removes illegal characters and the, the only illegal character you should see is a colon. 
So FileBot is grabbing the colon itself from the movie database or from the TV database, depending whether you're doing a movie or an episode. It's part of the proper name of the database, so it's supposed to be part of the proper name for Plex, but it's an illegal character and it has to be removed. Clicking Validate removes it, and then you can rename. And now, these are renamed, and I could just rename them directly on the server on my Synology NAS, but doing so, Plex might rediscover them as fresh. If I simply copy them over, Plex will discover them as duplicate. Then if I went through the directory and removed the earlier ones that were named not quite so well, it would keep any of my collection tags that I already, already have. So the last thing I want to do is let's get rid of this local window and let's see how this works on the NAS. So we're back to Fraser. it's on the NAS. With FileBot under Linux, I could just right click and open, open it with FileBot. I don't know if that's even an option in Windows. Probably could figure out how to get it to the menu, but let's just see if I can drag it into an open instance of FileBot. Oh, I could. So let's use my custom expression, the deluxe one. So my server is going to redetect all these intros as soon as I rename it. But seeing I'm only renaming one season, it's not like it's going to change the collection tag for the show because there's other seasons not being renamed. And I have this in a sitcom collection. So I'll simply hit rename. And from my desktop computer running Windows, I renamed the files directly on my NAS. So I think I figured out what the one gentleman's issue was. He must be running Windows, or maybe this is a similar issue on a Mac. It doesn't happen to me on elementary OS, which is based on Ubuntu 20.04. Uh, it's a little old for the kernel, but the next version of elementary should be based on Ubuntu 22.04. So I know this is a long-winded FileBot video, but it was worthwhile to make a Windows one, and sorry I'm clunky in Windows, but there's a little issue using the default bindings for a TV show file name, but there appears to be no issue using a complex one. And again, you need media info installed for that complex expression. And I'll post those expressions in the description of this video. Thanks for watching, and I hope this is more helpful for anyone using Windows and FileBot.